So I figured we would probably get into a point where people were getting bored of just staring at my face for like 10 to 15 minutes, me talking about a subject or maybe a past experience in my life. And maybe we could do a little bit more diversification of the product, if you know what I mean on this channel. So without further ado, I decided that it was maybe time for me to start being an analyst. No, I'm kidding. Uh, at least partially. I thought it'd be pretty cool for us to actually dive into uh, something a little bit more wow in your face. Instead of just my face in your face, I figured we'd do this. We'd actually hop up some Doha, and I actually found the perfect game to go to when I was thinking about doing this immediately, uh, which is the Team Secret versus Team Spirit series, in which Team Secret already took game one, and game two offered quite a little bit of spice in life. So... We got through the bands, which apparently don't want to display correctly. But don't worry, because that's not really matters. What matters is as we go on through this, something a little bit funky begins to happen with Team Secrets drop pretty early. Now, this is a team that's actually kind of been known to very regularly go a little bit over the edge of what is the ordinary picks in the situation. And they open up with a, a little bit early of a Tinker pick, considering they have the final pick. Team Spirit don't really seem to give this too much thought in their mind they clearly just want to try and continue their draft um but if they are approached on the mid lane they obviously have this void spirit that can match up okay uh it's a bit hard to actually like give a fully definitive advance on that because we haven't seen too much of that matchup but straight away you can actually see the team secret are padding their draft in a really funky way because right now if you're team spirit you're looking at this go okay this is probably like a, a zykunka this should be uh a yaps or shaker yeah, everything is is kind of how we can perceive it to be. We're prepped and ready to see Matumba Man's hero come out last. And that is admittedly one detail they did get correct in this draft is that, you know, it was going to be Matumba Man as the final pick. And when it rounds out, look at what you've got here, guys. Hello. It is Matumba Man on the anti-mage, but something unexpected happens as the, as the game goes on. As I did glance at this uh, about five minutes in, decided to save the rest to just kind of dive into you guys alongside me. But... You may notice a nefarious Tinker spammer in the four position. That's right. Yapsaw, he made a request of Puppy and he was heard in this situation. So we'll get into the game. You'll see straight away, this is where things continue to get interesting. Because actually, when you look across at the mid lane, you're going to see that it's Matumba Man. He's going to be taking it off from the mid lane, which actually works out favorably. Because when you look at Team Spirit's lineup, it's pretty clear that there's going to be a Void Spirit mid. And, you know, Matumba Man, he's capable in the mid lane. And this is another thing that was always given secret, this kind of flexibility. But what you notice is the fact that once Ergon's confirmed, they're 100%. You know it's a good laning matchup. You don't want the Kunkka there because Kunkka relies on getting his, his spells off without much interference, right? And the problem is that while you might not be stunned or stunned early on easily, you can just dodge out by taking the point of Dissimulate by level 5 doesn't feel great as the Void Spirit, but it saves you against any potential kills the gun can make. So this kill happens. It doesn't really matter too much. It's more about the securing of the runes that occurs at the start, which is good coming out from the Team Spirit. But despite getting this first blood, it doesn't still look good on the lane matchup. You can actually see in the top lane, they're going to have to face up against the Kunkka with the Pangolier. And Kunkka's this type of hero that really loves to punish a more kind of vulnerable level 1, 2, 3 type heroes, right? Like, because... If you're in a melee melee engagement, like Pango doesn't have the best stats, but he's already padded them right, uh, then it becomes a race. Like if you can dominate on the first two waves and you get like a one level advantage as Kunkka, it's always a race with this hero. He wants to be the first to six. And you can already see that both Poppy and, and Yamashi are playing off the lane to try and ensure that their core gets to six first. But where it gets really interesting is actually when you're looking at the bot lane and you can see that Yapsaw, he's gone for the first point in laser. And it's going to actually be pretty effective to allow them to just deny out CS and get their own. Because when you're playing Lifestealer, you don't feel good about leveling Rage earlier. And even if you do, it doesn't really protect you that much. As the lane goes on, it gets more frustrating for you. Because it remains at an 18 second cooldown. The laser gets spammed more. And you can already see right now, like, the pressure is being put on. Shaker is still farming really well. It doesn't feel like the Jakiro is getting the pressure he wants. And it's another thing is, is if he steps too far forward, he's always just going to get lasered. So his only trade comes out of dual breath. But the thing that we're seeing in the mid lane, this is why there's actually a genius move by Secret, is look how much pressure is already applied on Ergon. Like, he's going to salve as well, but he has nothing for his mana situation. When you're playing Void Spirit, one thing you really hate to deal with is anyone who's kind of crippling your ability to utilize Resident Pulse's damage resorption. 
And Anti-Mage is a prime example of a hero that does exactly that because guess what? Mana Break doesn't get blocked by Resonant Pulse. And you are heavily reliant on your in this lane to kind of secure CS with the Pulse as well as actually pressure your opponent. And that's kind of what's made Void Spirit so powerful for a while is his ability to actually just kind of bully his opponent out without taking too much harassment in return courtesy of this damage absorption bug, uh, bubble. It's the same type of thing that allowed Ember Spirit for a while to be so dominant. But that hero has other things that really allow him to excel as well. But top lane, you can already see it actually starts to backfire. Whoopsie. Uh, we did miss out on that one. But you can already see the sentiments that are coming out, right? There's Pangale. It, you don't pick Pango to necessarily win the lane. You pick Pango to win the game. I think it's the best way to kind of summarize it. There are matchups where when you have like the correct matchup, you just pressure, pressure, pressure. But Kunko's a really tanky boy. He doesn't care if you walk up in his face and pray for a disarm with lucky shot. He's going to keep pummeling into you. And you know the trades are always going to be good for him because of the way Tybringer works. So you can end up a scenario, probably this Pango, where he has to add some sort of regen item to his loadout early on or have his support do it. You're not really going to see this game be one where, oh, Pango gets a javelin or, oh, this Pango is going to be quick in the arcane boots. He's going to be slow. And the comparative on the other side is that Zai is really un unpressured. New Life Stealer doesn't really do much to strength heroes anymore. You got to keep in mind, like, you don't get the additional damage. And as you can already see, this this attempt at pressure isn't going to work because of the posturing from Zai. Like, he's staying between the two, to, and they don't want to get double stunned. And when he tries to walk away, look what happens. Like, this is the thing. You you don't really have an insta-kill hero once you get them below, like, 50% HP on this lane on the side of Team Spirit. That's why it's, like, deceptive. Because of the way Feast is working, it's sustaining you, but it's not hurting your opponent more. So you don't burst them down to the 50% mark that quickly. That means you're relying on the dual breath. And you're only at level 2 on this Jakiro. And if you compare the two lanes, one is vastly superior in terms of damage output at level 2 than the other. Like, if you're talking about the ability to nuke, that is definitely on the side of secret. And you can kind of see that one starting to play out already in this lane. And meanwhile, in the mid lane, when you look at it still, sure, Ergon, he is CSing well. But I think it would be fair to say he's definitely being forced to ferry more regen. And he's going for this early pressure with a null, but Marty, you know, he's already got his double ray fan. He's going towards the ring of health. Once he has the ring of health, like, you won't be able to trade with him at all. And then for the top lane, it's just a case of Nisha's, yeah, not getting top of the world CS, but this hero doesn't need that. He just needs six. And he should get it in a reasonable time. And here you go. You can see this again. And the, the crazy part is actually, one, people's games... Hub's game is going to be ruined by the fact that we're start seeing expecting. support Tinker probably prop up after the app has proven that sniper support can work after it's being spammed. But speaking of the Tinker, it's not quite sniper support. He's going to go for the snipe on Amisha. And you can see that this is going to backfire a little bit. He'll get the tap and he will die for it. But sorry, I'm going to play by play mode. You know, it's been so long. You just want to talk about what's on screen. But uh, no, the point I was going to make in regards to this is that Lifestealer is being dragged away now from the wave. So while it seems good for the gold, the fact that they got a turnaround kill, like if you think about what your job is to do in this game, it's to slow down the Lifestealer's farm. Because he's the win condition, right? But your win condition, your farming boy is on the mid lane right now and he's not being slowed down at all. And when you look at Team Spirit's heroes, they don't rotate onto an anti-mage well at all. Like, you curse Crown, he blinks away. You get close enough that you're trying to Bramble Mace, he blinks away. He can then just use Counter Spell as well, right? Like, if you try and curse Crown follow-up. The Jakiro, like, he needs set up for the Ice Path. You have to hit a Remnant, which is not always a guaranteed thing. And then back on the bot lane. Here you go. This is what happens. Like, you kill Yapsor, but now he's back for full health. He's got his two Gauntlets. He's not an easy kill anymore. I think I'm just going to speed this up a little bit, actually. Because I want to, like, you'll see how they actually progress. I like he's going for the Soul Ring early. Just wants to keep the pressure up and out. And now Nisha is six. This is where the Pango is going to get punished constantly. Like, they just killed him. And they have Boat when he comes back. They wouldn't have X for 20. But there's now always a looming threat. It's not as high as it would be if, say, Enchantress took early points in Impetus. But that was because of the way the side lane played. And the harassment pressure we wanted to put out. That's fine. The interesting thing is that... This anti-mage is still uncontested. And because of what is happening to the Void Spirit here, his reliance on the runes, plus the fact he's never keeping mana up, he's not rotating. Like, there's no early rotations that are likely to come out in the next few minutes. Because it's too obvious, you need to come back for the creeps at times. And if you spam out all your spells and use all your mana to get the creeps to not get mana burned, then you've already 
helped anti-mage achieve his condition on this lane which is keeping you in check and making sure that you can't rotate to the out lanes and in the meantime this bot lane is gonna get rougher and rougher because when a lifestealer gets six there's no big power spike out of infest when a shaker gets six there's gonna be an echo slam when the jakira gets six whoop de doo when the tinker gets six he's gonna be mobile these are the kind of comparatives that really matter when you're actually looking at team spirit and the way that they're forced to play the game right now your pango is gonna want to just farm up more he's gonna want to be reactionary so what you're probably gonna find is they're gonna wait for team secret to make aggressive moves across the map and also i love this by the way from zai necronomcon not something you'd expect on a shaker but it's just an all-around good item to speed up your farming and also the punishment against any lineup that has uncontrollable kind of splash damage right is pretty noticeable so jakira could accidentally kill the necro creep and kill himself and speaking of killing let's 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 this is the this is always gonna happen though. Like uh, in what world can you step up to that creep wave and get away with that? Because they can easily just force rages out if they pressure him hard enough, right? So even if it isn't in that scenario, they will always be able to catch him off guard unless he plays really defensive and they keep the creep wave back here. And now look at this. Straight away, because your anti-mage did die, he was diving by the way. Uh wait, where's the rewind button? My rewind button is gone. There we go. So let me show you what happened in the mid lane, actually, because I noticed that by glance, it was good for him. How was it good for him? He does this. He picks up the DD. And this is so ballsy, but he doesn't care, right? Like, he, he knows there's probably going to be a rotation. He tries to back away, but look what happens. Dead. Like, there's no easy way for a Void Spirit to win this lane, which is weird because right now, people describe Void Spirit as a hero that kind of wins every lane and is the most amazing hero in the game. But I think my favorite part about this and why I actually chose this as a replay to look at is quite funnily enough, I recall Team Spirit in the Pushka League trying to run an anti-mage mid and losing at 17 minutes. And right now, we're at the halfway mark, baby, and it's looking a lot better for Team Secret's anti-mage mid than it was for Team Spirit's. So we're going to speed this up a little bit. Let's move through. Oh, this is the other thing as well. Like... Pango is trying to contest Nisha and slow down his farm. But look at the look at the way he like uses his spells. There are ways you can catch a Pango out before you can roll in thunder escape. See? You just tug him back, cancels out the roll in thunder. And sure you're not gonna kill him, but the point is that Pango can't pressure you and you're just getting stacks. He has to back away. Because if he hangs around, he's gonna die next time. That's why I love Kunker up against Pangos. Because you can easily catch them off guard. That's a level one X, right? Like once you get two free points in it, you'll be able to just gang bush him every time. And if you stack your stuns correctly, he'll never get Rolling Thunder off. And yeah, so it is going to be Booster Trial. I don't think there's any item you go for different, even when you're playing the support Tinker, especially when you're casually finding kills like this. It's just like, what does Tinker do? Like, what is the most exploitable item that Tinker has in a game? It's always going to be Booster Travel, and you have these nukes, which are always valuable anyway. So, like, name me one item which you think is more valuable than Booster Travel straight after Soul Ring. I don't think there is one. I do still love to see the Shaker with the Necronomicon, though. And I already feel like this life skills game is over, actually. Lost on the CS. And he'll move in. Sure, he's trying to pressure the Absorb, but, like, look at this. Gonna turn him. And this looks good, actually. But look at the map. Look at the rotations coming in right now. This is something that Secret are really good at doing is just sacrificing for the greater good. So they barely get that kill with the Ice Path, but it costs them so much to do that. And Matumbaman is the one who's just chimichangering up. Like, he's the one benefiting the most from this at the end of the day. And he's the win condition for Secret. What's happening to your win condition? He's dying in the river doing nothing. And all the while, your team fighting dude doesn't have Rolling Thunder. It's not available. And this kind of actually continues to hurt them. Now, this is the moment where they can maybe do something. And I believe they probably will. Yeah, they're going to rainbow TP in. They have to try and defend this because they're just being zerged right now. And this is the best prop like place to get use out of this Rolling Thunder right now. But you can already see that they back up. They might actually go in. Okay, they're baiting themselves out here. They have got the Rage. There's the Moonfruit. Oh, Zai. This is so aggressive, though. And there it is, the Rolling Thunder. But th this is another thing. Secret really quickly will just cut and run. They maybe lose Poppy, but whatever, you know. A little lost puppy being put down. These things happen in the real world. The fact is Matuma Man is still alive. And you just rotated all your heroes bot. So look what he does. He just goes top.
And this isn't Team Spirit necessarily playing their draft wrong. Like they're forced into this issue where if you look at the heroes and what the heroes want to do, they fight. They fight, 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 fight. They can do a lot of split push, but they need to fight. Um, Life Stealer isn't really the the outright gold tier farmer he used to be. You don't rush towards the Radiance after a Midas and feel like you're a god. You don't really build Midas's anymore. Instead, you are forced into what you're going to see from him, which is going to be the armor build, which I don't disagree with. I think you have to, but the problem is like how quickly you can or can't get it. Like your Void Spirit isn't carrying the game right now. So you feel like you have to actually contribute something now or the game's going to be over before you get a chance. Especially considering Matumba Man is getting close to that Battle Fury already. I'm just going to speed this along a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. Oh. Just a casual kill on Life Stealer. There's nothing too surprising about this. They can like kill him every time. It's another Echo Slam. It's always going to be the Echoes. You don't really feel like you need that one big Echo until you get a Blink Dagger. That's when it's like less justified to randomly throw that crap down. It's once again, it's the movements in, right? So now the anti mage has gone top. You see how Team Spirit are forced to come up here and pressure this tower because they need to slow down his game. The problem with that is look at the mid lane. They just paid him in. You see that moment there, right there? That moment's important. So he pressures once and Duraccio comes in. And at that point, it's too late to leave. Like he's in trouble. There's, there's no easy way out. He'll infest, but now you have to run away and you can't hang around anymore. Also, just love the scouting coming out, making sure Malak can't do anything. There's no turnaround. So now you're in a point where you just have to back away. You actually have to forfeit the tower or have someone else stand guard here. But you can no longer push this out as Duraccio. And you don't want to give over this point too early because once you give over the tier one tower, it really opens up the map for Secret to take control. And the anti-mage, like he's just going to apply more pressure on the side lanes. You're not going to be able to hang in the mid lane. You're going to actually have to commit one side or the other. And you, oh, die. Well, it's a lot of damage. I don't know if they can get him. But it's just the pressure again. Like, Ergon came mid. Now he can't hang around mid. Now they might just return to mid in a moment. But it's never a feeling that Seeker in a rush because they always have this AM to back them up later. And you can already see that while, like, Spirit gets this tier one tower finally, it's the space you surrendered. Like, if you were to break down the map, like, this right... So, so this is... This is secrets right now. Like they control almost two thirds of the map. If you look on that mini map, you are very confident about the position of this game. And then for like Kunkka, it's simple, right? Like Nisha is just going to play this enabler role. And this is another thing that, that I think we've harped on in the past about secret being gods here at is their ability to just and choose one person or choose something to enable. They complement something in the lineup. They complement each other really. Um, here we go. It's another fight. But look look at the convergence. Look how much quicker it is because Seeker have been playing in this area. Like, this is danger town for the side of Spirit to ever run into. They're not in control of this area anymore. And even if they show up now, this will probably backfire because I think they Matumba Man just baited himself out a bit and he's not ready to fight. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna get punished a little bit for this. So this is Team Spirit bringing the numbers they needed to. Because it was slower, it cost them something at the beginning that maybe it wouldn't have. And it'll cost them more, actually. Ooh. Ouch. Ooh. I, uh... I would not want to be that Void Spirit waking up with that split headache in the morning. But yeah, in the end, they don't get the biggest objective. The biggest objective, once again, gets Valley, which is Matuma Man. And you can, like, see the net worth disparity. Duraccio is forced to just keep going because now he's committed to the fight. He needs to finish this, this armor and just continue that way, but... <laughs> You can always feel this impeding doom as Secret are like closing the map and Team Spirit are always making these plays on their side of the map. There's never a moment where you're like, wow, they're going on their opponent's side. Like this is actually probably the furthest forward we've seen them play in the last few minutes. It's actually a really good kill. This should enable them to push on this tier one tower, but if they can't get it, then it's a, like, it doesn't feel good because anti-mage is still farming. So you need to open the map right now and take this out. But you can already see that Yapsor is just doing the Tinkerer thing, and he already has the boost to travel 16 minutes in. Or in a POS 4 Tinker. POS 4. You know what? If I had the, if I had POS 4s in my pub games that got at that time, I, I'd be okay with you running Tinker 4. Just something to consider. Once again, like, look, look at this. Your, your POS 1 is chasing for a POS 5 kill because he's a killer. All he can do is kill in this game. And even if you eventually find this, it's a support enchantress. 
It's not even going to be the easiest kill because he got up to level 7. And he picks up the hook, of course. Puffy arriving with a cloak, perfectly timed. You still haven't killed him. Please kill the Corio Puppy. Nah, he... he, he... <laughs> a, a message to my past fives now. If you can make that kind of space, I will also allow you to feed. I feel like I'm making a checklist here. Just be as good as secret. But then the other thing is that like that type of play doesn't feel good because you got you got nowhere near the gold you would have got off killing creeps. If anything, like a hero like your Pangalier or your Void Spirit should be looking for those while you're farming. And your Pangalier is just being hunted all the time. In fact, I think he's just dead. Oh, he has to leave. There's, there's no way you kill him. So they've at least stopped that rotation. But there's always this concern that like Team Spirit can't convert. Because you've got this Tinker now that has boots to travel. You've got this Anti-Mage that's going to split push until he's ready. And you've got this armlet building life stealer who now really, really needs to fight. But who do you fight? Even Nisha is playing super defensive with X marks the spot. Like it's in C Team Secret, uh, Secret's mind, there's no rush to end this. And we'll just speed it up a little bit until some more action happens, which I think is... Did they? Yeah, they got the Solar Crest complete, so they might do something soon. They're already moving bot. They're actually just like reactionary. And we usually talk about how you need to be proactive and oof, that's painful. Not reactive. But because of the heroes on Secret's lineup with the Shaker, with the boats, there, there are ways for you to just react very easily. And you can see actually how they get punished by the reactions if they go first. So this boat run is going to run out soon. It'll kill you, Mish, but now he just needs to get out. But look at it. Team Spirit again. They don't want to commit anything. They've already used the wrong funder in a weird way. Uh, they failed to get a kill. And now Matuma manages to free it up again. I think the interesting thing to actually highlight here is how much time the Tinker is absorbing of theirs to chase after what is a POS 4. And by the way, whoa, that was quick. That's your POS 1, guys, with his armlet ready. That was your hope and savior. And the comparative is looking grim because soon there'll be a Manta in the AM. And at that point, no one really wants to stand next to him, especially with the stun lockdown they have. This once again comes the way that Secret are prioritizing the bot area and forcing Team Spirit to always be there. I feel like I've said it twice already, but it, like, it just has to be said so much. They are never being allowed to take a fight in favorable grounds. And what I mean by favorable grounds is, yeah, this is their area of the map, but <laughs> this ward alone tells you who's in control. It's that case that Team Spirit really want to take towers is just never happening and the fact that they secret keeps up this tier one tower still up to this point is so important for these like potential reactionary rotations and we'll speed it up again also actually something to highlight here is ergon going for this crystalis it seems like a decent item it's gonna allow you to maybe get some kills but in this type of game i have to ponder if there are better items available I don't know if something like an Ags is going to do you a lot of good. Maybe if, if when you think about the heroes you're up against, like the Tinker, the Kunkka, like these heroes that you can stop. But you know there's going to be BKBs on the, the Kunkka eventually. You know the AM is going to have the Manta to try and block out. Um, but maybe even a Yule to just set up easy kills. Then again, you're always worried about the Count spell. But here you go. They get the Tinker. But once again, you just traded a POS 4 and 5 for a POS 3. Oh, no, but you do. Okay. Let's be honest, though. While that is a damn good kill, they weren't 100% expecting to get it. That was the uh, after tick burn of the macro bar. Okay, I think they got too greedy, though. This, this, I don't think this kill happens. Yeah, Shake is coming. So they finally took a fight on their opponent's side of the map. But did you notice a problem here? This little guy here is still standing. They might convert it now. But now they have to immediately back away. Like, they've burnt too many resources. They might actually get caught in the retreat. But this once again goes to what we were saying about Team Secret. Is that they were controlling the tempo most of this time. And they, like, they have top lane pushing in. They've now going to push mid out again. They'll probably look to actually take their Team Spirit's tower on a rebuttal situation because the difference now is they're going to have Echo Slam available. All their heroes are going to be up. All their spells are going to be available. Roll and Thunder will be available soon. But you've now got a Lifesteal and a Jakiro that are sitting at like 20% of their health. There's no easy way that they can hang around in the fight. Um, meanwhile, when you actually look at the other heroes on the side of Team Secret, 
they are about to have that mantra in about 600 gold. The Tinker, I believe he's like, like he's just about got Kaya. They're ready to go again. Especially with charge down the Glimmer Cape. And then when you look on the other side and think, okay, what is like the, the item comparative? Like what is the big thing for Team Spirit? They got, they got lads on the, the Pango. I'm not painting a good light for Team Spirit. And I guess there's a concern that maybe maybe I'm being a little bit biased, but for real, like as this now goes on, there is just this chief concern that even though you finally took the tier one tower at 20 minutes in, the AM is coming online. In fact, five more minutes and he'll be pummeling the poop out of everyone on the side of Team Spirit. He will be breaking their spirit alone. And I think the big concern then is if you look at the potential counter initiation on both sides, which primarily looking at these offlaners, I would probably back a Shaker in these situations over a Pango. Just because it's harder for, like, the Pango has to selectively choose his fight location. The Shaker doesn't, and the Shaker can also hinder the Pango with the fissures. But I like that they're making this smoke movement. They're identifying that, like, they can't wait anymore. They took a tower. It was good. They've got this DD. This is the best opportunity they're probably going to have for the next few minutes. The problem, however, is the Shaker knows. He breaks the smoke. Yeah, this is this is painful. Wait, do they? Oh, oh. Uh, uh. That felt like a smoke from one of my pub games. Okay, that's 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 unfair. It wasn't on them. That that was actually just Zai like instinctively reading things very well but you see how like the moment the smoke fails they just back up again they're gonna let life still have this area but secret are done with it they want to get rid of this tower now because after that they're probably prioritizing roche next and once again the benefits of the post for tinker just goes out shoves the lanes doesn't give a damn and look at this this kill just happens immediately because you're too split. Like your Jakiro, usually there's maybe a concern that if you jump the Void Spirit there, the Jakiro is waiting behind. But I'm pretty sure they saw him top. So that concern is just completely gone. And then we speed forward again. You can already see, like they're trying to... Oh God, no, they, they come back here again. This is just the theme of the game. It's like Secret have been... like it, it, You know what it's, it's comparative to? It's like when you go, uh, like, say you're going to go play some Airsoft, right? And you're playing against the, the local champion team that have played on the map all the time. It's your first time on the map. I'm not saying it's Team Spirit's first time, but the way that Secret are playing around the bottom area of the map, it feels like it's the home. Like, they've practiced here for years. And that they've been prepped for it since they were born. And this is, like, the one area where I like Team Spirit right now, is if they get up here and stay here. But you can always see the loom and fret and the concern that they want to return to bot because of what Secret are doing on the split push game. And at this stage, when you look at the, like, the item progression situation, like, Pango, lads, is okay. But it's just lifesteal, right? It's not... I don't think your issue is my lifesteal doesn't lifesteal enough right now. It's that we don't have enough damage to follow through on these targets quick enough before they get their spells out adequately. And then when you look at the other items they got, sure, we saw this Chrysalis being built and he's going to have the Deso soon. But we just saw how easily Argon gets killed as well. And I think you're reaching a point where the Tinker is the biggest issue for you. Especially with the Blink Dagger now online. Like, sure, maybe if the AM jumps on top of, of Argon, you can counter-initiate. But how do you counter-initiate against the Tinker? I feel like right now, the thing that is stopping Spirit from doing anything, that Secret have done so well in this game, is they keep going to them. So it's never a case of Ergon's able to hunt for the Tinker. He's able to hunt for the back line, the Shaker, find these heroes. Instead, he's being found and then his team is being forced to defend him. Once again, like you, you see this movement, but you just see like Secret know what they want to do. And what they want to do is dodge. They're not ready. They want their next item. And now it's here. They've got the BKB. And this is where they can just hunt and chase. Because actually, when you look at the side of Team Spirit, unless they perma lock him down, Matumba Man is not dying. And he's a 2k HP hero at this point. And we just highlight the fact that Team Spirit don't really have great follow through damage. Even when you get this Deso, your life stealer is still lacking. He can disarm, which is great. But that buys you a few seconds. And then if you're talking like this padding effect of who can reduce whose damage most, 
you're always playing against the Kunkka. And you have no way to eliminate the Kunkka from the fights. Oh. I mean, they at least catch Zai. And that'll offset aggression. But you just brought your whole team here again. I am still farming in the meantime. Kunkka is top. Pushing in. And your Tinker is debuffing any push in from the mid lane. And the problem is now that you've split, the hunt is already on from the side of Secret. And you can see he just doesn't care. In he goes. One dead. Hello. Can I pluck a Pixie's wings? No, I cannot. But the point is that you've actually, like, you've, you, this game is just cut and dry at the stage. There is no easy way that you can combat the anti mage. You can already see it by the fact they're trying to eliminate everyone around the AM. But it just doesn't work. That is the most sorrowful and, and pitiful climbing into someone I've ever seen from a life stealer. Yeah, this is their do or die fight, actually. If they can't win this, they're literally in their base for the rest of the game. That's actually good. The debuff is running out, but now it's the AM. And AM will kill everything. Oh, that gone's just quick enough. He actually needs someone to stun for him. Zai is now here, but they're going to back away. Okay, so that is really important. That fight is critical for Team Spirit. If they don't take that fight right there, like if they don't uh, rebuttal their opponents, the game is just over at that stage. Because at that stage, like you, you commit the buyback, right? Um, you bring your voice spirit back in. Wait, did you commit the buyback or did he just respawn that quickly? Yeah, he did buyback. I'm just double checking myself. I'm pretty sure he did. I didn't make that up. But uh, yeah, so he commits the buyback in that situation. You're already 14,000 gold down. If you can't find the kills there, then you're done. But the problem is, once again, guess what I'm going to highlight? Here it comes, guys. They still can't kill the anti-mage. I think actually at this stage in the game, the only two heroes that, that Secret care about keeping alive to win fights is Shaker and AM. Anything else is a bonus. And the waves are always pushing in. Like I, I, I picked this game to highlight how dirty Tinker support is. And it really is. Like he hasn't got much, but it's just instinctively what the hero is capable of doing. This is one of few heroes still in the land of Doha that is able to utilize Boots of Travel to their full extent. Everyone really felt the nerf, except for Tinker Pickets. They feel great about the change to Boots of Travel because now they're their own exclusive thing again. And you can already see how this is going to backfire. Like, this is what the Tinker does. He pushes out, then he arrives, and he pokes and pros. You don't want to hang around. The Matima Man's anti-mage is, of course, the follow-through brute force, but it's the fact that you are initiating on the wrong heroes every time. You can never really find this Tinker. They tried once or twice, and it felt like after they failed, especially after that Roll and Find a bot, where the Tinker Ward, which belonged to Secret, protected them to get out in time, they didn't want to commit anything big for Tinker. But now you're at a stage in the game where you absolutely must commit things for Tinker because you don't have the items to protect yourself. Like, no one on the side of Team Spirit has a pipe, for example. You don't have a naturally good pipe builder on your team. Which means the Tinker is just beating the living crap out of you. And then you're like, well, you know, you, you cause they can totally just dodge out. What do your supports do? March of the Machines will just decimate them instantly. And this should be actually, I think this is just going to be cut and dry. Whoop. Oh, God. I zoomed forward a few moments. What the hell happened? Ooh, good lord. I, uh, I think I broke something. Oh, we're back. Sorry, guys. Messing around. Yep, thank you. We'll blame it on that. So yeah, they get the Roche, and now they just move forward. Pixie dead. But there's no organized attempt to do anything anymore. This is like, Teen Spirit is now at a stage where they will wait in their base for their opponents to come and hope to God that they can hold. And it looks like they won't be able to. Because the fight breaks out here. And there we go. That's what I was talking about. Like, Zai is the perfect current initiation here. That is a beautiful Echo Slam. That's a game-winning Echo Slam right there. It's not like I know it because it says Team Secret Victory shortly from this. But that ends the game. I'm not going to lie. That was actually... Uh, I don't know how clean that was of an analysis from me. But I think the point I was trying to get across to you guys is actually, like, to show you how diverse roles in Dirt can be. I love the fact that Secret always shows us that. I think that early Tinker pick is interesting because the way that they were able to confidently go about it and knew that Yaps will want to play it, 
allow them to treat the pick in a way where they go, okay, you either answer this and you have sub like you've shown your hand, or you let it go through and it's going to be a core tinker and you're in trouble. Uh, especially that way to kind of catch people off guard with that kind of stuff. No one would really expect tinker support at the moment. And I also love the fact that they were willing to flex the animation to mid. I think he is a really good counter on the lane to Void Spirit, as we saw there, because and for the reasons we discussed early on. But I actually think I'm going to round this up now. I just realized that this has gone for 35 minutes. I felt like I didn't talk about this game that long, but I did. I wonder if in future I should actually just like watch the entirety of the game, because I watched part of the game, like parts, but I didn't watch it start to finish. It's just it was running late. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do for this one. I thought this would be cool to try this out. So this is the type of thing that will probably improve or get different as it goes on. But I thought it would actually be cool to start doing like analysis replays, that type of thing. Maybe I'll like try and get guests in for it where I can find quirky games and we can analyze them together. Maybe I'll even do more games than just Dota 2. Um, but I thought it'd be a cool thing to have on this channel. We said before that the daily vlogs would be taking all kinds of shapes and form. Um, hopefully I didn't waffle too much and people found my points interesting. I felt like at one or two points I was maybe re reiterating facts that already have been stirred but i think like there are plenty of microscopic details you can take away from that but you could see the the way that team secret controlled the map allowing them to win the game like the fact that they forced so much attention to that bottom area constantly throughout that game unlocks so much of the map and completely shuts down team spirit's ability to like come back in that game i don't want to say it was over in the lanes for team spirit but they definitely, like, they have heroes that don't want to be behind in those draft comparisons, especially some like a Void Spirit wants to be able to rotate. And that's why I love the Anti-Mage mid so much. I think that was one of the big things. Like, Tinker support is the bait, the clickbait. But for me, Anti-Mage in the mid was the big kind of factor I like to highlight in that game because it completely just shut down Void Spirit's ability to do anything. But that's going to be it, guys. Uh, I'll see if I can do more of these in the coming days. I might try and keep them more condensed or shorter. I don't know. I'm I, I'm trying to like adventure new ideas instead of me just talking about my life. Uh, maybe we'll find like more interesting subjects to talk about. Maybe we'll do like news section things. There's plenty of ideas still in the box waiting to be unwrapped. But I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you for tuning in again. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.